Ramanujan faced several challenges during his time in Cambridge. The cultural and social differences between India and England coupled with health issues. Ramanujan's strict vegetarianism, which was a cultural and religious practice, Ramanujan's health deteriorated and he returned to India in 1919. He passed away on April 26, 1920, at the age of 32. His death left the mathematical world mourning and loss of a brilliant mind at the peak of its potential. These are deities or murtis. These were created for a specific purpose. If you want intelligence, you go to one kind of deity. If you have fear problems, you go to another kind of deity. You have love issues, you go to another kind of deity. You have prosperity issues, you go to another kind of deity. Like this, they made energetic forms, which you must learn to use. Before getting into the details of Ramanujan's life, let's first watch Sadhguru's video. It is believed that Srinivasa Ramanujan could write mathematical equation as if he had access to the whole universe. He also says that God has dict dictates him those mathematical ideas. How can I reach to that state? That is the question. First you must find a goddess. <laughs> All of you, do you use a phone? Why? Why do you use a phone? Why did we first of all make a telephone? Because we can speak. If we had no ability to speak, would we manufacture a microphone, a telephone, any of these things? Hello? No. Why did we come up with a bicycle? Because we can walk, but we wanted to walk faster, so we ran. We ran and we knew there's a limit. We wanted to go faster than that, so we came up with a bicycle. Suppose we were made like a tree, rooted to one place, would we have invented a bicycle? No. So a telephone, a telescope, a microscope, Bicycle, automobiles, airplanes, everything what? What faculties we already have, we want to enhance that. We have not come up with any machine for which we had no faculty and suddenly we came up with something because we don't even know what those things are. Yes? The faculties that we do not have, we have no way to perceive that whether it exists or it doesn't exist. Only faculties that we have, we are trying to take it far. So in this effort, we came up with many machines. All machines here are only enhancing our existing faculties. They have not come up with any absolutely new faculty. In the same context, right from ancient times in this culture, we came up with machines not made of material, not made of mechanical process, but an energetic process. What does a machine with an energetic process mean? See, suppose, suppose somebody is dead. You seen any dead people? Hello? Where did you see? I never saw. You saw dead people or dead bodies? Dead ah. Dead body means what? Let us say no accident happened, no murder happened, no nothing happened or let's say somebody just suffocated and died. If somebody suffocated and died, heart is the right, heart is doing well, maybe not beating but it's fit, liver, kidney, dam, everything is all okay. Only thing is, the person is not alive. All the mechanical parts are okay. Only thing is, that life energy is missing. So this is also an energy machine on one level, isn't it so? Yes or no? This is also an energy machine, on top of it we put mechanical parts to it. Even if all the mechanical parts are intact, if there is no energy, this will not function. So, from looking deep inside, we understood 
we could create an energetic machine without mechanical parts because if mechanical parts come they need a certain level of maintenance and servicing and works but if you just create an energy machine it will simply function day and night suppose your motorcycle or your car or whatever you use let's say your phone was just an energy machine without mechanical parts see it's happening from such a big phone it's slowly becoming smaller smaller with less and less mechanical parts it's becoming more and more efficient why do you think slowly it is moving towards a space where it is becoming more energetic than mechanical isn't it so do you remember old james bond movies such a big phone i was looking like i just born baby but today it's become this much as they are expecting in another probably 10 15 years your phone can be just imprinted on your hand simply like this you can speak or you don't even have to do this if you simply do that it will say what you wanted to say so from being mechanical now we are going towards energy based machine from a huge earth mover to a computer this is the big difference that it's more energetic and less mechanical so we created energy machines which in this culture we call as deities or the english word is deity generally we call them as murtis that means a form a form which has a certain ability to do certain things energetic forms so some different forms are like windows to the existence you could open up different dimensions all this is forgotten made into absolute nonsense today in the form of superstitions but otherwise it was clearly prescribed because today people get identified with this or that they think they their gods are about belonging to them now these deities god is the wrong word for this these are deities or these these were created for a specific purpose if you want intelligence you go to one kind of deity if you have fear problems you go to another kind of deity you have love issues you go to another kind of deity you have prosperity issues you go to another kind of deity like this they made energetic forms which you must learn to use these are not places of prayer these are not places of worship these are places where you learn how to use the machine for your benefit they were built in various forms and various capacities they were also connected to people's genetic information which we called as kula daivas where only for that genetic pool it will work this is a very complex process so ramanujam comes from the south why i'm especially mentioning the south is if these things were there everywhere in the country but the northern belt of this nation has taken too many invasions too much disruption south <laughs> oh we you know south of india so we been very well protected even today we maintain many things we never had major disruptions as the north had because of this certain sciences are still alive an active which could produce a ramanujam ramanujam ramanujan spoke about black holes nearly 100 years ago or more than 100 years ago when there was no concept of black holes he made mathematics for black holes when there was no concept of black holes science always progresses like this first the concept then the theory and then the mathematics but he made the mathematics first before there was a concept before there was a theory and when when they asked him he was sitting on his deathbed and simply pouring out mathematics notebooks and notebooks of mathematics simply pouring out people asked where is this coming from what is this he said my devi bleeds mathematics Srinivasa Ramanujan an enigmatic and self-taught mathematician from India left an indelible mark on the world of mathematics 
with his profound and groundbreaking contributions. Born on 22nd December 1887 in Erode, Tamil Nadu, Ramanujan's life was tragically short, but his work has had a lasting impact on various branches of mathematics, including number theory, infinite series and modular forms. Ramanujan's early life was marked by both brilliance and hardship. His family, consisting of a clerk father and a housewife mother, struggled financially. Despite facing economic challenges, Ramanujan displayed an early aptitude for mathematics. He was largely self-taught, delving into advanced mathematical texts and exploring concepts independently. At the age of 12, Ramanujan independently developed sophisticated theorems and identities. His notebooks, filled with mathematical discoveries, hinted at the depth of his innate mathematical abilities. However, due to financial constraints, his formal education was limited and he faced challenges in securing the recognition his talents deserved. In 1909, at the age of 21, Ramanujan married Janaki Ammal, a girl chosen for him by his family. The marriage was arranged following the cultural norms of the time. Janaki, who was supportive of Ramanujan's passion for mathematics, played a crucial role in his life. However, Ramanujan's intense focus on his mathematical pursuits sometimes strained his familial relationships. The marriage also faced challenges due to Ramanujan's deteriorating health and financial struggles. His health issues, which later became more pronounced during his time in England, began to manifest early in his life. Despite these challenges, Janaki stood by him, providing emotional support during difficult times. The journey to recognition Ramanujan's breakthrough came in 1913 when he secured a clerical position at the Madras Port Trust. His colleagues recognized his mathematical prowess and one of them, S Narayana Iyer, played a pivotal role in connecting Ramanujan with the mathematician G H Hardy. Hardy, astounded by the depth and originality of Ramanujan's work, invited him to Cambridge in 1914. The collaboration between Ramanujan and Hardy proved to be highly fruitful. Despite cultural and societal differences, the two mathematicians developed a strong professional relationship. Ramanujan's work during his time in Cambridge and groundbreaking contributions to mathematical fields. Ramanujan's most significant contributions lie in the realm of number theory. He produced a wealth of results related to highly composite numbers, elliptic functions and modular forms. One of his famous results in the Ramanujan Hardy number 1729, famously known as the taxicab number. When Hardy visited Ramanujan in the hospital and mentioned arriving in a taxi with the unremarkable number 1729, Ramanujan quickly responded that 1729 is an interesting number because it is the smallest positive integer that can be expressed as the sum of two cubes in two different ways. Infinite series. Ramanujan made significant contributions to the theory of infinite series. His work on hypergeometric series and mock theta functions brought new insights and opened up avenues for further research. His series representations for mathematical constants such as pi were particularly noteworthy. Ramanujan's infinite series continue to be studied and applied in various branches of mathematics. Mock theta functions. Ramanujan introduced mock theta functions, a family of functions that later became instrumental in the development of string theory and quantum physics. Ramanujan's work on mock theta functions laid the foundation for later developments in mathematical physics. Ramanujan's exploration of modular forms, a concept in complex analysis with deep connections to number theory, was groundbreaking. His discoveries in this area had a profound impact on the development of the theory of modular forms, influencing subsequent generations of mathematicians. Srinivasa Ramanujan's direct contribution to the study of black holes are limited, as he primarily worked in the early 20th century when the concept of black holes was not well established in the scientific community. Ramanujan's work was focused on pure mathematics. particularly in areas like number theory infinite series and modular forms however indirectly ramanujan's influence can be seen in the broader development of mathematical tools and techniques that have applied in various branches of physics 
including the study of black holes. Ramanujan's influence on mathematical physics and indirectly on the study of black holes continues through ongoing research and exploration of the mathematical structures he introduced. Mathematicians and physicists draw upon Ramanujan's work in their attempts to reconcile seemingly disparate realms of quantum mechanics and gravity as manifested in the study of black holes. While Ramanujan did not directly engage with the concept of black holes during his lifetime, his legacy endures in the form of mathematical tools and ideas that have become integral to contemporary theoretical physics. Researchers building on Ramanujan's foundation continue to explore the mathematical intricacies that underlie our understanding of the cosmos, including the mysterious and captivating phenomena of black holes. Despite his extraordinary mathematical abilities, Ramanujan faced several challenges during his time in Cambridge. The cultural and social differences between India and England coupled with health issues. Ramanujan's strict vegetarianism, which was a cultural and religious practice, made it challenging for him to find suitable food in England affecting his health. Ramanujan's unconventional methods and intuitive approach sometimes made it difficult for him to provide formal proofs for his theorems. This led to skepticism and challenges from some members of the mathematical community, highlighting the cultural and pedagogical gaps between Ramanujan and his Western counterparts. Ramanujan's legacy extends far beyond his short lifetime. His contributions to the mathematics earned his widespread recognition and admiration. In 1918, he was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society, a rare honor for someone without a formal degree. This same year, he was awarded the Bokar Memorial Prize. Despite facing initial skepticism, Ramanujan's genius eventually gained acceptance and acclaim. Tragically, Ramanujan's health deteriorated and he returned to India in 1919. He passed away on April 26, 1920 at the age of 32. His death left the mathematical world mourning and loss of a brilliant mind at the peak of its potential. The legacy of Srinivasa Ramanujan endures through the continued exploration and application of his mathematical ideas. Mathematicians worldwide have dwelled into Ramanujan's notebooks, which contain a treasure trove of unpublished results and conjectures. Scholars and researchers continue to study and extend his work, unraveling the mysteries embedded in his mathematical creations. Ramanujan's influence extends beyond mathematics. His life story has inspired numerous books, documentaries and films. The Man Who Knew Infinity, a biography by Robert Canigal and a subsequent film adaptation brought Ramanujan's life and work to a broader audience, further solidifying his status as a mathematical luminary. Srinivasa Ramanujan's story is one of the extraordinary talent, perseverance and triumph over adversity. His journey from a self-taught mathematician in a small town in India to a fellow of the Royal Society in Cambridge is a testament to the universal law of mathematical brilliance. Ramanujan's work continues to shape the landscape of modern mathematics with his theorems and formulas finding applications in diverse areas of research. As we reflect on Ramanujan's life and contributions, it is crucial to recognize the importance of fostering and nurturing mathematical talent irrespective of background or formal education. Ramanujan's story serves as an inspiration for aspiring mathematicians and underscore the value of unbridled curiosity and the pursuit of knowledge.